you think about the environmental impact of gasoline and the health impact for all the medical bills and acid rain and smog, and then you add that we have to go to war in the Middle East just to protect the supply chain when you add all the costs. So gasoline is a quite expensive proposition. If you look at governmental policy as far as how favorable we are to gas companies, it's obnoxious actually. I mean, subsidizing pollution cleanups, road infrastructure, and gas stations, and you know, basing our whole transportation system on that. We could certainly take a little bit of that money and make an electric vehicle transportation solution because we are going to have very soon cheap, inexpensive, powerful electric vehicles. The heart of our motorcycle here is right here. This is our, our, our battery pack. When do you see things hitting parity with gas? Pretty soon. I mean, you take our motorcycles, for example. It's about a penny per mile in operating cost. We have enough juice for you. Yep, it's hot. So it's very, very inexpensive to operate. And of course, the pollution is a fraction of a gasoline motorcycle. Because even if you were to generate the electricity with a coal-fired power plant, it's still about a seventh the amount of greenhouse gases emitted. Because coal plants are on a large scale, they're actually quite efficient compared to a gasoline engine, which utilizes very little of the energy to make your car go forward. Most of it just goes out the tailpipe as heat and pollution. And our chargers are 95% efficient. Our motor is 93% efficient. So you're getting almost all the electricity that goes into the battery pack, out of the battery pack, into the rear wheel. It's just very, very clean, very, very efficient. So parity, I think, is very close. The only thing, we're still at a higher price point. This is about twice as expensive as the equivalent gas motorcycle. So we aren't quite, the upfront cost is still not quite there, but we're really close. Our S model, which is the, this one here, the Supermoto model, and the Dual Sport, these will each receive uh, a 10% federal rebate. We were part of the stimulus package, and we actually lobbied in Washington. We were part of a consortium of uh, that. We actually led the consortium and lobbied in Washington to get that through. It was really an interesting process. I personally am always involved and interested in politics and how lobbyists work. And it was surprisingly affordable, actually, <laughs> to hire a lobbyist in Washington and uh, get the era. And, and I think there's a lot of politicians who really want this. They want to be green, they want to be friendly to electric vehicles. So they really just needed a little nudge, a little uh, persuasion, and uh, the electric vehicle manufacturers just needed to be more organized. I think the government gets a mixed scorecard. I think they, they probably are biased toward, toward gas cars, but there's also been some good stimulus from the government for electric vehicles. And I think all of that will help, and it'll help Americans adopt electric vehicles quicker. It's clear that it's, it's going to dominate gas vehicles completely in the next decade. We're very, very close to having a, another battery revolution where you're really going to have no excuses other than to buy an electric vehicle because the batteries are going to last forever. They're going to be reasonably priced. Here in the Silicon Valley, I'm aware of a lot of uh, companies that uh, aren't public and they haven't made announcements, but they've secretly let us know that they are really on the verge of some big breakthroughs with battery technology, making higher capacity batteries, safer batteries, batteries that last basically forever where you could recharge them as many times as you'd want forever and they would never lose their charge capacities. The batteries are getting a lot better, the motors are getting better. Everything's really coming together for electric vehicles. So, you know, the handwriting is really on the wall. The era of gas cars, which lasted, you know, about 100 years, is really right at the very end. I mean, basically, there just won't be a need for them, other than the coolness of having a loud gas engine. But, you know, without that, it's really very, very near the end of its era, and it's the beginning of this electric vehicle era.